NHRA Drag Racing is back at the E3 Spark Plugs, NHRA Nationals, and Monday Morning Racer was on location, and this is NHRA National Event in Review, next, brought to you by strutmasters.com. It was over 130 days since the NHRA Mellow Yellow series was in competition. They finished out their second round of competition there in Arizona, went to Gainesville. Gainesville was postponed. The season was put on hold and fan and racer alike was wondering if we would get back to NHRA drag racing with Top Fuel, Funny Car, Pro Stock, and Pro Stock Motorcycle. It definitely happened and it happened right here at Lucas Oil Raceway Park with the E3 Spark Plugs NHRA Nationals. In competition was Top Fuel, Funny Car, Pro Stock, Pro Stock Motorcycle, and this was definitely a national event to remember with firsts, repeats, and a lot of questions now looming for the future. So let's look at this first segment I got for you, the throttle whack. Man, who doesn't love a good throttle whack? And this segment is basically the top story of the weekend from the Monday Morning Racer. And the top story is this. Flying Ryan Ayler got his first win in NHRA Pro Stock Motorcycle Competition. And he did it in style, folks. He did it over three-time Pro Stock Motorcycle Champion Matt Smith there in the finals. Now, though it's Ryan's first NHRA win, I want you to understand he is an accomplished rider in the American Motorcycle Racing Association, the AMRA, I believe I'm getting that correct. He is the two-time Pro Mod Harley champion, also holds the current record in that sanctioning body on a motorcycle. So he's definitely accomplished rider. Hey, here's Ryan, ecstatic over his win and the run itself from Monday Morning Racer. Monday Morning Racer here in the pits, Indy Nats. Indy number one caught up with the winner of Pro Stock Motorcycle, Flying Ryan Ayler. Man, talk to me about your trip down the full mile, winning round by round and getting this national event. Well, that's the fastest mile I've ever done in my life, no question about that, you know. But, you know, we, uh, we have been just busting our butt and working just around the clock. My dad runs our engine program. He's back at home right now. You know, the first year we came out and raced, my dad went to every single race with me and I said, hey, at the end of it, we were spun out because we went home, we make it to work every Monday morning by 9 a.m. It don't matter if we fly or drive from anywhere in the country, we're there. And, uh, you know, we did that for a year and, and my dad, uh, we looked at each other and said, you know how much time we just wasted? You know, I mean, you're the engine builder. And this whole time you were out here to support me and work with me and all that, but you don't tune the bike. You're a, you're a super MacGyver. But well, I've been had that, you know, that's been passed down to me. So at, at this point, I said, you know what, you need to stay home and you need to do what you do best and I'll do what I do best. And that's what we've been doing. And, and now we've just gotten consistent. We knew at the end of last year at Pomona that we had some momentum going and it felt good. And we showed up at Gainesville and it was just like, you gotta be kidding me. You know, here we are ready. We got the, the tune up. Basically the tune up is same motor as Pomona. The same tune-up that we started the weekend with came from that Pomona map, and we worked with it all weekend, and sometimes we went the wrong direction, sometimes we went the right direction, but 
we got a little bit of luck, and I think you need a little bit of luck out here. This uh, this group of competitors is just ridiculously hard to be up against. So, I mean, uh, we, we just got all the stars aligned, and, and we brought one home for, for the team. Definitely did. You got your yellow hat. You got your Wally. And you did it over stiff competition, like you mentioned, and in the final over Matt Smith. Yeah. So what, what's it like taking out a Matt Smith over there in the other lane and getting your first win? Matt Smith has just edged me out half a dozen times in the last three years. We were at Charlotte the first year, and we just started showing we had good performance, and we are going to go to the finals my first full season in the four wide, and Matt just comes along in the blue victory bike and just goes, oop, and just gets me by about six inches. And, uh, and then, it, you know, we're at Sonoma last year, and uh, me and Matt are in the Mickey Thompson Pro Bike Battle, and he just edges me out there. So then I get to race him in the, the, you know, the real race, and then what happens there? Crank sensor goes out of my bike, and Matt get launches, and then his bike doesn't shift. So he's had his number, you know. Like I said, who's next is Andrew. Andrew, he's he's beat me. And I have not beat Andrew yet in competition, but I'm coming for you for sure. Well, there it is, Ryan calling out Andrew. Look, man, you've got a pretty noticeable brand. I love the orange, the white, the black, and the flying Ryan, Ryan, the skull, and the helmet, and all that. It looks really good. I noticed it last year at the Southern Nationals. Why that look? How'd you come up with it? Well, my dad has owned and operated our cylinder head business for his whole life, and it was B&K cylinder heads. That's Brad and Kenny, and my grandpa is Kenny, and my mom is Kelly, so she likes to always think that it was for her, but it came way before my mom, you know, but but how do you put Ryan in there? B&K and Ryan? I said, so we changed the logo around and went with the skull, and that's how we can incorporate, you know, what I am. I'm the crazy one. I'm the I'm the skull with, the, you know, the eyes that are bleeding and, and the sweat coming off. And, you know, that's that's what we came up with. And and uh, we had to do something to kind of stand out a little bit because I always like to say my last name is Ayler, but it's spelled with an O. So everyone looks at me like I'm crazy. So Flying Ryan was, uh, was I actually got from a friend of mine in Florida. His name's the Flying Taco. And we're sitting at lunch one day. I said, Taco, I got to steal your name. I'm going to be Flying Ryan. And it, it was just kind of after that, we just went with it, you know? Stellar, man. Well, Flying Ryan is now a, synonymous with winner as well. Congratulations, Ryan. Thank you for being on the Monday Morning Racer camera. Look, folks, for strutmasters.com, I'm the Monday Morning Racer here at the Indy Nats. Let's get in the groove on news here on Monday Morning Racer. So, top stories from the weekend, other than a first-time winner in Flying Ryan. John Force, his absence, the entire team, no cars in any of the classes they usually participate in. The absence of them being here and the absence of a statement as of yet from John Force Racing is something that was a bit of a buzz. But let me say this, folks, there were full fields in every class. There were a number of competitors here that were not John Force, that did race down the quarter mile, that did race down a thousand feet, and their stories should be told. And let's focus on them and let John give us the tale when he's ready. So next, let's take a look at a few folks that are not John Force, but they were here at the national event and performing quite well, some not so well. A few strange things that I noticed while being in the stands and enjoying nitro cars once again going down a thousand feet. So Kyle Wurzel, top fuel. This apparently happened Friday and then also in Q1 on Saturday. They cranked the car. Things sound all right until the burnout. During the burnout, the car sounded terrible. Imagine a top fueler hitting a rev limiter. It almost sounded something similar to an alcohol car, a nitro-injected alcohol car, and how they kind of rumble, but that's not how a top fueler is supposed to sound. Myself, everyone else in the stands were wondering what is going on. In fact, they back it up, and we are expecting the NHRA to shut them off, but they do not shut the car off. Instead, Luigi Novelli, he actually shuts off his car, in this Q1 session because, well, they weren't able to get it to go back forward. With now Kyle ready to stage, they stage him up. The starter can already tell what's going to happen. He's over in the other lane that's now vacant because they've pushed off Luigi. And sure enough, pretty much at the hit of the throttle, Kyle blows it sky high. Looked like something out of the 80s. Now that's not the only thing 
that was a bit strange. As you know, Corey McLenathan, glad to have him back. He was in competition. He did make the field. His round one did not go the way in which he wanted it to, though. Burnout stops the car. They're getting ready to back it up. It will not get into reverse. I, I think he was even attempting to slightly press the throttle, possibly to get it to jerk into reverse. It just would not go into reverse. And there's some confusion by the guy who assists him in backing up, the NHRA official down track. Eventually it winds up where you've got two NHRA officials and the original guy who came to assist in backing up. They're actually backing Corey up. TJ Zizzo is over in the other lane. His team is fuming as they're possibly running on fumes and things are possibly overheating. Corey gets backed up. They shut the car off. TJ Zizzo then blasts down the thousand feet at a 377 if I remember correctly. So in observation, just some strange things I think and a few strange calls that just about everyone in the fans were like, what was, what were they thinking in those moments? What was the NHR, NHRA thinking in those moments? So glad that the competitors are back, but there might have been a little bit of rust still to knock off for some folks. Looking forward to Indy 2 though, and many of those competitors being back out. Beyond those two strange incidents, I really feel like this was a national event to remember under the circumstances of COVID-19 being a two-day national event, the first day back to racing and being under competition for over 130 days. It's definitely a national event to remember with first-time winners, big names coming back into the sport. And look, I think this was a national event that also had some serious point implications with the matchups that it has, depending on how long the season, in fact, does go. This was also a national event, I think, for the underdog. There were teams that were not here that you thought would be here, and there were players not in play that these underdog independent teams, I thought, could make some advances in NHRA drag racing. Those teams such as Lex June, Terry Totten, and Alex Milodinovic. I really think those teams had a good weekend. They might not have gone deep in the rounds of elimination on Sunday, but they had good representative weekends and they were able to figure out some things for their program. Look, let's hear from Lex, Alex, and Terry right now. Monday morning racer here in the pits at the Indy Nats or Indy One caught up with Lex June. Lex, look, tell me, what's been the first weekend like with Lance Larson? How's it gone? It's going uh, great. We uh, went through some things. It's, we had to adjust some deals. We had a long winter. Took some time to get the season going. So we had to get some things tuned up. but. The pass we made today looks really promising. Everything is coming together now. So looking forward to next weekend. Definitely a good pass today. Really capping off the weekend well. A uh, 404, you told me in the uh, lounge you had a little bit more in it. Break down that run for me. Well, you know, you're running against Doc Collita as one of the best leaders in the business. So, you know, if you want to at least have a chance, you need to get going. So. Pretty cool to leave on in first, to hold shot in, and every incremental 60 foot, 330, towards the 80, run the same number, so. But I decided to click it off because it, it shook a little bit. It, it wanted to go towards the, the center line. And, uh, you know, I'm just a beginner here, and I don't want to run, ducks run, I don't want to hit any cones or whatever. I decided to click it off. But the thing is, I didn't see him, I thought, and I saw the finish line, just cruising to the finish line, and then he passed me. I thought, okay, well, that was pretty close. So uh, I know when we would have kept the gas open, before we would have run the run. 
but you know I got a lot of respect for everybody although I'm a winner myself but you know you need to take it step by step I know we got a car here that can compete with everybody we need to tune it up a little bit more we need a little bit more clutch uh, but you're getting there all the parts look great didn't break anything that's something that's the first step to make rounds win rounds and win races so we are really looking forward to next weekend and make the next steps and I know you will be a player I, I believe I believe you man look you know this weekend y'all had some adversity you worked it out made a good good representative run you look at the computer there's more out there on the table and you got next week you know with another drag race right here that's a perfect scenario to come back in pick right up where you left off and run with it speaking of this week and next week under these conditions with the coronavirus look you've been in some tough conditions racing in europe and other situations where does this stack up in your drag racing career of uh, kind of being some tough weekends under the circumstances well you know there are two two things going on here corona is really bad to be honest the only thing you remember be remembered of is you need to wear masks so and that's that's not really something we look forward to it's hindering us but we, we are racist we do anything and everything to be out there to enjoy to entertain the fans and and get going after it. besides that yeah we had to go through some things that i'm used to see we uh, as i call it we had to be guy for a couple of things but looking at what happened today it was all worth it so you know being here in indy indianapolis this is basically for me personally the biggest baddest historic race structure is uh what more do you want and then be qualified be able to race and then afterwards see you were even there to win the race you know yeah it's tough but really rewarding drag racing fan look this man will race under under any conditions Lex June living out the American dream. I'm the Monday Morning Racer for strutmasters.com. This has been Lex June. And you know, never quit. Monday morning racer, I'm still perusing around in the pits here at the Indy Nats. Indy one caught up with Terry Totten, who is in a Strutmasters.com top fueler this weekend. Man, look, for a small team, low budget, y'all came out and represented yourselves very well. Talk to me about this weekend. Hey, it was a good weekend. We had some uh, good runs. We had some good early numbers. Had to click it off early on the first one. It looked like it wanted to uh, break them loose a little bit out there on the big end. So uh, rather than smoke the tires and, and hurt something we just got out of it and it was enough to keep us in the show uh, second run we gave Billy a good one to half track and the same thing it uh, wanted to start drifting away a little bit so we got back out of it and I guess I clipped the eighth mile cone but it happens uh, but we've got a lot of data I haven't heard any parts so we're ready to go actually about one piston is all we're putting in the car so wow one piston after the you know after the run and yep. you like you said you getting the data, building towards, and I suspect you're here next weekend trying to make the show, so yep. is that yep. that's the case, yep. good? Yep. So, I mean, y'all got yourself set up that much better yep. to really come out and perform, make the field, and possibly go some rounds next on Indy 2. Yep, we're gonna, looking for Indy 2. There'll be a couple more cars here, so we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to really step our game up just a little bit here, try to get in the 390s, mid to 390s, uh, to get in that show, and then do it again, try to chase uh, whoever we got, as far as we can hopefully they make a mistake or we just plain beat them awesome now you're not out of the indiana hub you know you're out of nebraska currently correct. is that correct yep correct yep at so, omaha and we'll uh they, they're allowing us to leave our our stuff parked under secure premises here and then we get to just drive home work four days and come back next thursday night work four days and come do some work in nitro <laughs> but have fun while doing it 
And you know, it's nice that the NHRA and the track is allowing you guys to stay over with your gear and it's all secured. How do you think this weekend has gone for the NHRA under the circumstances with everything with COVID-19? What has it been like for you as a driver, owner, crew member? What's it been like under these circumstances? Uh, it's just, you know, with no ticketing and tickets having to be done the way they were, online waivers, online tech card stuff that I just haven't gotten up to speed on. You know, now that I know it, next week will be a lot smoother. I think it's 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 all doable. I think the, you know, everybody seems to be abiding by the rules. We're doing exactly what we're supposed to do. We're adapting. We're overcoming, and that's that's what it's about. Well, Terry, look, we're very glad as NHRA fans and followers to see a team like yours making the show, having an impact. We're looking forward to what you've got next week. Uh, how can folks find you on social media and follow the team? Oh, this is Terry Totten on Facebook. Um, we really don't have a website, but if we're, we're looking to put something together so that we can interact better uh, with, with fans. But right now I just use Facebook and we got a little uh, TNT Motorsports on there that uh, you can click on and like and follow us a little bit more. Um, and yeah, next week should be a, a better week for us. It's kind of unique to get two weekends in a row at the same track and hopefully in close to the same condition. Um, you know, there was a big change from Thursday to Friday here. And then another change from Friday to Saturday when the rain came in. So next weekend may be more like Thursday was. So we're just gonna stack our stuff together so we can tear it apart when we get here and make our calls for next week then and try to get a tune up in there that's just a tick above where we're at right now. Well, Terry, look, you being the proverbial underdog, I'm sure people are pulling for you. Monday Morning Racer is pulling for you. Thank you for your time, Terry. Look forward to seeing you anytime. Thank you. See you next week. Monday morning racer here in the pits, Indy Nats, Indy number one. We've caught up with Alex Miladinovic. Alex, look, gone for the nostalgia rings here. The pro ranks had a pretty good Pomona. You had a pretty good Indy one here. Talk to me about the weekend and the goals for the team and getting some accomplished. Well, once the whole COVID thing happened, we knew we had a chance to get caught up because essentially the racing season had stopped. It was the best opportunity for me and the guys to really get caught up and do the work to get all of our spare parts ready to go, go out, continue to chase money, and be ready for the midsummer racing. The opportunity that we had, this was about the time we were gonna come back and race, which would have been Sonoma, Seattle, the Western Swing. The great coverage that we got from Pomona and our performance really helped out. We were able to bring on some new sponsors. Some of our current sponsors wanted, some, wanted to play a little bit more with us. And that got us to the Indy E3 Nationals right now. We're real happy, real proud to be here. Uh, hey, we're glad to see you out here as fans and media types. Look, talk to me about that new sponsor. I've been seeing everybody running around with these nice hats with this like American Shield on it. Oh yeah, well, RedshirtFriday.com came on board. Uh, it's Coach Holman who's paying for it. Red Shirt Friday is what we want everyone in America to do to support our troops that are deployed. Red shirt, red, stands for respect everyone deployed. We're just trying to spend, spread a positive message for everybody to support our brothers and sisters overseas. So what we have on redshirtfriday.com is buy a red t-shirt, buy a red shirt from us. All the proceeds are gonna go to veterans programs and the whole program is funded by Coach Holman. So he was really behind us and backing this. A lot of our friends uh, on our team are vendors. Our, excuse me, we're military and uh, we support it. it's very dear to our heart and uh, we also bought on boss strong box they make uh, storage lockers for firearms and uh, for, for your vehicles and bossstrongbox.com came on board and they're another all their products are made in America which we stand behind and um, they came on and they also support veterans programs too so that's really important to us Man, America, military and guns, gotta love it. You're hooked up with it. Now, your name, 
hot for teacher. I gotta ask why. I mean, obviously everybody thinks about the uh, you know the uh, song way back. You know, hot, hot, oh, hot yeah. for teacher. But why for you? Why? Why is that on the well, car? Well, when they have in the nostalgia series, they always want you to name your car. I love Van Halen. Don't get me wrong, but my wife is a teacher. She is currently employed at a school district. So I figured I better do something, keep the family involved, and keep her happy. And I, I should probably include her. So that was the inspiration for it. Both my parents were teachers, and um, it, it was a great segue into bringing it into motorsports. The rock and roll, the cool thing about this with Van Halen, the Van Halen fans love you, the teachers love you, and then all just the whole thing, having the pinup girl, you know, the old bombers used to have pinup girls on the nose as the B-17s. We always thought that it'd be cool to add to the vintage of the nostalgia racing. And then when we brought it up to, to race with NHRA, um, it was really cool. And having the TV time, I would like to meet someone from Van Halen at some point. Michael, Anthony, any throwing that out there. Um, also, we're trying to spread a good message for kids with school. My dad was a shop teacher. He taught for years and it was a chance for kids that didn't do good in school. They can go and take auto shop and be and find their realm. Not everybody has to be doctors or lawyers. There's kids that like, they want to be tin man. They want to be welders. They want to be electricians. And the same thing with Marcy. She teaches PE, trying to spread positivity with kids, youth activities and sports. And if sports isn't your thing, there's, there's an arena for you at school and really keep our kids involved and, and, and real for the next generation. Alex, look, I love Hot for Teacher. I love funny cars and dragsters having names on them. Harkens back to the old days, definitely. We're glad you're doing well. Glad you're out here. And, man, thank you for your time. Hope to see you here at Indy 2. Yeah, buddy, we're going to be here. Thank you. Oh. Class session, let's look at Top Fuel in particular. There were 20 cars that entered in Top Fuel this weekend at the E3 Spark Plugs NHRA Nationals. Some, like Pat Dakin, did not show up, but nonetheless, it was still a full field for this national event. With big names such as Tony Schumacher and Corey McLenathan showing up to race this particular event, Indy 1, and possibly, from what I understand, Indy 2. Now. When you look at the event and all the major players involved and the underdog teams, you'd think we'd wind up with something a little bit different, but we had a repeat. It was a repeat in the finals of the 65th U.S. Nationals. Billy Torrance versus Doug Coletta. And this time, Billy Torrance gets the Wally over Doug Coletta here at the Indy 1 Indy Nats. That also allows Billy Torrance to slide into third position in points his son second, Leah Pruitt is there at the fourth spot, slips just a little, and Antron Brown cracks the top five. Doug Coletta leads the points currently with 111 points over second. That is basically a full event win and some qualifying points or low ET points to throw in there. He has definitely got a strong lead with a strong car right now in NHRA competition in Top Fuel. car is definitely proving to be one of the most interesting classes right now in NHRA drag racing. Tight points battle, great stories happening in it right now. So there's 18 cars roughly that were entered at this particular national event. Obviously 16 are only going to be racing on Sunday and it was a tough fight to get into this field. The first round of qualifying was extremely tough on NHRA funny cars many of them not making full song passes and setting up where the round two of qualifying was critical for them. There were individuals on the bump at one time like Fast Jack Beckman. In fact, it set up such a matchup 
with Ron Caps and Tommy Johnson Jr. So Ron Caps there in the first qualifying round did not qualify well at all. I believe it was a 455. And then Tommy Johnson, he goes out and qualifies as a 398. Ron stayed the number 16 qualifier, barely staying in the field. His second round of qualifying, they do the burnout, they bring it back to the line, and the car just goes dead, silent. And being in the stands watching it, you didn't expect that it would be the Don Schumacher car. Instead, it was, and the car next to him rocketed down and made a qualifying pass. So, round one, Tommy Johnson Jr., Ron Caps. Let's take a look at it. Tommy Johnson Jr. marched his way through the field all the way to the finals where he matched up against Matt Hagen, fellow teammate for Don Schumacher Racing. With Don Schumacher Racing ensured that they would win this national event, it's the sixth straight NHRA funny car win for Don Schumacher Racing. That is impressive looking back to last year and now in this year. Matt Hagen, as you will see though in this video clip, wins the E3 Spark Plugs in HRA Nationals. Even though Matt Hagen won it, he certainly did damage it, doing some damage because of that engine explosion. He moves third into points after this event. Second is Tommy Johnson Jr., only behind Fast Jack Beckman in first by two points. And in fourth, Tim Wilkerson. And fifth is actually John Force holding tight, even though was not in attendance at this particular event. Pro Stock isn't dead. 22 cars decided to enter into the NHRA E3 Spark Plugs Nationals. 16 cars obviously made the field. A lot of cars went home. This national event was interesting. This was the debut of a lot of pro stocks. So you had Troy Coughlin Jr., Chris McGahey, and Kyle Kid Chaos Koretsky all making their debut in NHRA Pro Stock Plus. Bruno Massel was back in competition and a pro stalker with Elite Motorsports. But with the new faces and some returning names, nonetheless, it was a repeat of the Winter Nationals here in 2020 with Jason Lyon and Jeg Coughlin running for the Wally here at Indy. And this time, Jason Lyon gets the best of Jeggy. Watch it. With the win, Jason Line begins to creep up on Jeggy there, first in points. Erica is third, Delco is fourth, fifth is Bo Butner. He holds even though he went out in round one. By the way, Bo Butner's got some interesting news for Indy 2 in the Pro Mod ranks. I caught up with him earlier in the week. Bo, 
you know drag racing, and because you know drag racing, you've got a pretty interesting deal next weekend with a Ricky Smith that's going to be out of the car. Update us. Yes, uh, first of all, it's good to be back. We're in our 2020 Stroke Master Camaro. Uh, I don't know how many days it's been, but I don't know. It feels like we were just in this position in Gainesville getting ready to go, and they dropped the bottom out of us. So, yeah, next week, uh, asked by Ricky's been a good friend. Uh, a lot of respect for the man. He's a, he's a hard worker, great racer, champion. So uh, he had some back back problems and had him had him repaired. And uh, we'll be driving his Pro Mod next week, Truck Master Camaro. Pro Stock Motorcycle was in competition for the first time in 2020. Now, as you saw earlier on Throttle Whack, Flying Ryan got his first win in NHRA competition. That puts him first in points. Matt Smith is second. And rounding out the top five is Hector Arana Jr. I do want to point out, though, someone that had a great bike but red-lighted, I believe, in the second round, is Scotty Polachek. Keep your eyes out on Scotty Polachek and that purple, very purple, strutmasters.com Pro Stock Motorcycle. Now, folks, look, let me close out this video, this in review of the E3 Spark Plugs NHRA Nationals brought to you by Monday Morning Racer, supported by strutmasters.com, by giving you a few fan tips. So if you're ever at Lucas Oil Raceway and you're wondering, hey, where can I go get a bite to eat in the area? If you will go south, Highway 36, and what I believe should be pronounced as either Avon or Avon, Indiana, Avon's in New York, I definitely know that. Nonetheless, Highway 36, you've got just about every option that you could ask for concerning stuffing your mouth and enjoying some good food. I can highly recommend the Texas Roadhouse there on Highway 36. Folks, look, thank you for watching this in review by the Monday Morning Racer. Until next time, God bless and keep the pedal to the metal.